So let's create a new class. I'm going to right click here on Java basics package, go to new and then class. And I'm going to call this variables continued. And notice the naming convention here. This is the name of the class. And the first letter is capital, as well as the first letter of the second word uh, is also capital and there's no spaces. Okay, so just keep this naming convention in mind, the first letter of a word should be capital uh, when it comes to classes. And we need this public static void main, and I'll explain to you exactly what this means uh, in the coming lessons, but we need that to, to run a, the, the computer program. So all of the code we're going to write is going to be inside of this main method. This is the entry point of every Java program. So in the previous lesson, we looked at the integer data type, right? And that's defined by this keyword, int. The int can take values up to 32 bits. And what that means is basically a number that is uh, 2 to the 31st power, which is a fairly large number. You can punch that in your calculator. Uh, and you'll see how, how many zeros there are there. For example, if I name a variable, and of course I can name it anything, I've defined, I, I've declared the variable of type int here, and I've, I assign a value such as this one, it's acceptable. But then if I make it too large, notice that uh, we've reached, we've reached the, the limit for the amount of data this variable can store. If you hover your mouse over here, it's saying the literal you know, 1000 uh, of type int is out of range, all right, this is just far too big a number to be able to store in uh, this variable, because the data type it supports is int. So the maximum we can store is going to be somewhere around somewhere around this many zeros, but basically, two to the 31st power is what the integer data type supports. Well, let's say we want something bigger, right? What if we have really, really large numbers? Well, there's another type of data called a long. And let's just uh, name this variable uh, big number. So of course, we can give it a small number such as zero, or I can give it a really large number such as this. This data type is actually capable of storing a, a number this big. All right. The only problem is right now, if we hover our mouse here on this error, it's saying the literal uh, values of type int is out of range. So it's considering this to also be an int. Um, and the Eclipse compiler is not sure what number, what type of data this is, is just seeing a number. So if we add an L here, now it's going to understand that this is actually a long data type. Okay, this is data that's going to be assigned to a variable that is of type long. So with the long data type, uh, when we have large numbers like these, uh, you just want to add a, an extra L at the end. Now, of course, these require a lot of memory when the computer program is running, the capacity for this variable is very high, right, it can store very, very large numbers. Okay, I can continue to add zeros here. Um, I think that's a little too many. Um, so it has a capacity of a number this large. But let's say in big number, I, o I only save something like this, which is a pretty small number relative to the capacity of this variable. Well, the, the computer is actually still going to reserve way more memory than it needs because the data type for this variable is long. So it needs to make sure it puts aside enough capacity to be able to save uh, big numbers, really, really, really big numbers into this big number variable. Uh, so this is not the, the best usage of this, uh, of this variable, because we're only putting a little bit of data. So if we know that the data that's going to go in this variable is going to be small, we want to use smaller, more efficient sized data types. So int here is a better option, but something even better than int is called a short. A short has the maximum capacity of 32,767. So if I put in 32,600 and, uh, oh, excuse me, 767, this is the maximum number this variable can store. If I change the 7 to an 8, we've got a problem. All right, so let's make this 7. And on the, on the negative side, Remember, all, both, both of these numbers can also be negative. So for example, this int, this can also be a negative. On the negative side for the short, this can also go up to a negative of 
32,768. So you can think of these as buckets that have the, uh, the capacity defined by their data type. Let's say you need a variable where you're only going to be storing uh, numbers less than 100. For that, int is still far too big and short is still pretty big. There's another data type called the byte. And I'm going to say really small number. Okay, I'm just defining a variable here. I can call it anything. But the maximum that this data type supports is 127. Right, this is the maximum number this data type supports. If I make this 128, we've got a problem. This is too large, right? So uh, we need to make this 127. And on the negative end, it goes to 128. Right? This, is the ma this is the minimum uh, that this, this data type byte supports. Now there are some other data types. I'm going to show you a screen here where it summarizes all of them. But say you need to store uh, decimals. Um, you can't store decimals in either one of these, int, short, a byte. That's, it's not allowed. We need a special uh, data type called the double. And I'm just going to say decimal variable. And we can give it something like 394.003. Moving on, we have another uh, data type called Boolean. And the Boolean just stores a value of true or false. So let's name this variable, you know, I'll just call it decision. And we'll say it's true. I can name this true or false. Both true and false are special keywords in the Java language, and they mean exactly what, what they say. True evaluates to true, and false evaluates to false. And the Boolean data type can only store true and false values. Okay. Now I'm going to cover one more, and that's called the car. The car data type. And I'm just going to name this uh, variable letter, because it just can store single characters. So for example, I can store this character, right, just a single character. And if I make it larger than that, it's going to complain, right, saying invalid character constant. So it needs to be just a single character. And it could be pretty much anything in quotes in these single quotes, right? All of these would do, you know, I could put T here, some percent sign or dollar sign or whatever, as long as a single character on the keyboard, uh, this data type supports that. Now to get more details about the different data types that we've covered, um, I want you to go to a, a, a link where it explains this in great detail. I just opened my browser here. So if you navigate to this link, it's going to bring you to this uh, handy tutorial that I recommend you also read along as you go through my course. Um, and this, these are all the different data types that we went over. The byte, the short, int, long, float, double. Uh, I don't think we've seen the float, but you've seen the double. You can read up more about it. It's not important for now. But you've seen some of the others, all of these pretty much data, data types. And down here is a chart that explains their default value. There's some extra examples down here that I recommend you read. Uh, just save this page as your favorites if you are ever uh, curious about the different data types. For now, we're not going to worry too much about it. We're going to be using simple data types for the remainder of the course because there's a lot more to cover in Java. We're going to be using a lot of int, a lot of uh, double, and uh, Boolean, as well as the string data type for storing sentences and words that we saw in the previous lesson. So, so far in the course, we have some important takeaways that are going to um, help you throughout the rest of the course. The number one takeaway is variables are used to store data temporarily, and you could change the value that is stored in there. So we've defined a big number here, right? Um, somewhere down here, a uh, big number, I could change that to 6 after this particular line. After this particular line, anything that references big number is going to uh, see the latest value, which is 6. All right. So again, a computer program, the starting point of every Java program is the main method. It starts from here, and code is executed line by line. Okay, Each one of these are instructions to the computer on what to do. So it starts from the top of the main method and goes line by line, executing each line of code sequentially. Another thing is uh, these variables have data types. So this uh, big number, right? I can't, I can't try to put a decimal in here. right? This is not acceptable because this variable called a big number uh, is a short. So decimals, there's no place for decimals in this data type. right? 
the bucket would just completely reject it. Think of these as buckets, right? This is a bucket for byte data type. This is a bucket for double data type. This is the bucket for uh, booleans, right? True and false. So each one of these variables have the data type, and Java is referred to as a strongly typed language, meaning every variable that you define must have the data type stated before the actual variable. Now, the, the data types that we've seen so far in this course, the int, the short, the byte, the double, the boolean, the car, and there's another one, float, all of these, these are referred to as the primitive data types. These are the building blocks of the language. They're actually part of the Java language. These are the built-in primitive data types you can use for any Java program. But what makes this language very special and a lot of other object-oriented languages is that you can create your own types, right? These int, short, byte, double, boolean, car, these are already predefined built-in data types of the Java language, but you can create your own data types and declare your variables using your own data types. And that's the essence of object-oriented programming, which we'll learn in a few lessons. So stay tuned for that. There's just a couple of other uh, building blocks that I want to go over before we look at classes and methods. And then we'll also get into the details of what this public static void means and then some of this other syntax. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up here. In the next lesson, I'm going to go over something called arrays. Arrays are used to store multiple related things in one variable. So for example, we have the var variable here, big number, really small number, decimal variable. Each one of these variables only contain a single element. Well, with an array variable, you can store many elements of the same type. So I'm going to go over that in the next lesson. So stay tuned. I'll see you soon.